షార్ట్ వీడియో అయితే ఇది ఉండదు ఇంట్లో లేదు కదా పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఆటోమేటిక్ వచ్చేస్తారు కదా స్క్రీన్ షేరింగ్ మేడం రికార్డింగ్ ఆటోమేటిక్ అవుతుందో రికార్డింగ్ అయిపోతుంది ఆటోమేటిక్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ ఫోర్ మెంబర్స్ అవుతున్నారు మేడం జాయిన్ అవుతున్నారు జాయిన్ అవుతున్నారు మేడం పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ సెవెన్ రికార్డింగ్ కూడా ఆటోమేటిక్ పెట్టారు మేడం సరే సరే ఓకే వాయిస్ వినిపిస్తుంది మేడం చూడండి సరే నాది హలో హలో రాంబాబు ఓకే స్క్రీన్ షేర్ అవుతుందో చూడు రాంబాబు ఒకసారి మొబైల్లో వస్తుందా ఆటోమేటిక్గా పెట్టారు మేడం అది స్టూడెంట్స్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఓకే స్టార్ట్ చేయలే మేడం థర్టీ మెంబర్స్ టెన్ అయిపోయిందిగా నన్ను కూడా మ్యూట్ చేశారు మేడం ఇక్కడ నా నా ఇమేజ్ ఇమేజ్
రోల్ నెంబర్ తో రిజిస్టర్ అవ్వాలండి అలా హలో ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఆల్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ షుడ్ జాయిన్ అలాంగ్ విత్ యువర్ పిన్ నెంబర్స్ రిజిస్టర్ నెంబర్స్ not your uh, names okay so kindly join your uh, pin numbers not only with your names so kindly modify your uh, names only join with your pin numbers don't join with your names మేడం స్టార్ట్ చేద్దాం ఫార్టీ వస్తారులేండి జాయి వస్తారు స్టార్ట్ చేసేది ఎందుకంటే కంటెంట్ చెప్పాలి కదా రికార్డింగ్ అవుతుంది కదండి ఓకే మేడం ఓకే అవర్ ఆడియో ఈజ్ ఆడిబుల్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఓకే షల్ ఐ కంటిన్యూ మై సెషన్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు డిఎన్ఆర్ కాలేజ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ మేనేజ్మెంట్ మెంబర్స్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ సార్ అండ్ అవర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ హెచ్ఓడి మేడం అండ్ కొలీగ్స్ అండ్ మై డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ టుడే ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ అబౌట్ the subject signals and systems here we are explaining about we am i am explaining about the signals and systems in second year ec and as well as the third year students third year triple students my name is kp mani assistant professor in the department of ece today i would like to explain about the subject signals and systems the main objective of the of the course are given below initially to introduce the terminology of signals and systems to introduce fourier tools through the analogy between vectors and signals and to introduce the concept of sampling and reconstruction of signals to analyze the linear systems in time and frequency domains and finally to study the jet transform as mathematical tool to analyze discrete time signals and systems now coming to the syllabus in signals and systems now unit 1 introduction about signals and systems so in the first unit the main importance of use of signals and systems here signals and systems covers analog and digital signal processing ideas at the modern communication and measurement we present the basic concepts for continuous time and discrete time signals in the time and frequency domains time and frequencies are related to by the fourier transform and now what is the signal importance in signal processing a signal is a function that that conveys information about a phenomenon in electronics and communications it refers to any time varying voltage current or electromagnetic waves in that we have to carries the information and now the definition of signals and systems is mainly referred to as a signal is a description of 
how one parameter varies with another parameter for instance like voltage changing over time in an electronic circuit a system is any process that produces an output signal in response to an input signal and the advantages of signals and systems now comparison of the compression of fast and efficient reliable transmission and storage of data and second one is applied on audio image and video data for transmission over the internet storage and examples of the signals and systems are cds dvds mp3s mpeg and jpeg and etc the mathematical tools of a signals and systems mainly considered fourier transform comma concentration and modulation and coming to what is the difference between analog and digital signal analog and digital signals are the types of signals carrying information the major types of signals carrying the information the major difference between the both the signals that the analog signals that have continuous in electrical while digital signals are non continuous in electrical so coming to the fourier series and fourier transform second unit in the fourier series representation a series is a way of representing any periodic waveforms as the sum of the sine and cosine waves plus a constant the fourier series is used to decompose signals into basis elements like complex exponentials while fourier transforms are used to analyze signals in other in another domains for example from time domain to frequency domain and the fourier transform is an important image processing tool which is used to decompose an image into its sine and cosine components that output of the transformation represents the image in the fourier and frequency domain while the input image is in the spatial domain equivalent so the applications of the fourier transform is it has so many applications such as in electrical engineering vibration analysis acoustics optics signal processing and image processing and so on now coming to unit 3 sampling theorem so it is also one of the important unit in signals and systems by using this unit the sampling theorem establishes the conditions that prevent aliasing so that a continuous time signal can be uniquely reconstructed from its samples its samples the sampling theorem is very important in signal processing applications like aliasing effects and now when a continuous time signal when a continuous time signal sinusoid appears as a discrete time sinusoid with multiple frequencies and now the sampling theorem can be defined as the conversion of an analog signal into discrete form by taking the sampling frequency as twice the input analog signal frequency the input signal frequency denoted by fm and sampling signal frequency denoted by fs so the output of the sample signal is represented by the samples now coming to the analysis of linear systems it is the fourth unit in this unit we are mainly considering an lti and ltv systems are mainly used lti is nothing but linear time invariant system and ltv is nothing but linear time variant systems so in this we are using different types of ideal filters are considered like ideal lpf hpf bpf means low pass filter high pass filter and band pass filter characteristics and one more important things are used in in this unit we are considering parsevals theorem and correlation auto correlation functions are evaluated here now coming to the fifth unit laplace transforms 
so in laplace transforms this is the operator that transforms the signal in time domain into a signal in a complex frequency domain called as s domain the complex frequency domain will be denoted by s capital s and the complex frequency variable will be denoted by capital s now coming to the z transform that is the 60 unit in this a signal processing the z transform converts a discrete time signal which is a sequence of real or complex numbers into a complex frequency domain representation so it can be considered as a discrete time equivalent of the laplace transform so the main significance of z transform is the z transform is used to convert discrete time domain to discrete frequency domain signal it has wide range of applications in digital signal processing it is mainly used to analyze and process the digital data so coming to the first unit introduction to signals and systems here introduction the signals are variables that carry the information signals are variables that carry the information so signals are nothing but by considering an analog signal or a digital signal so both the signals are carrying the information from one place to another place so it is described as a function of one or more independent variables one or more independent variables basically it is a physical quantity the signals are a physical quantity it varies with some independent or dependent variables so signals can be one dimensional or multi dimensional signals so uh, signals examples are by simply considering an audio signal or video signal and also considering uh, image processing signal so these are the multi dimensional signals now <clears throat> the simple definition of a signal a function of one or more variables that convey information on the nature of physical phenomenon so here the examples of a signal which is simply represented in a mathematical representations v of t i of t and x of t here v of t is the signal voltage with respect to time v of t where i of t is the current magnitude of the given signal and x of t is the the total signal representation so here we are representing <clears throat> so many signals heartbeat blood pressure and temperature vibrations so the one dimensional signals are mainly depending on single variable example our speech signal this is the one dimensional signal whereas multi dimensional signals are mainly depends on one or more variables like image image segmentations and now signal examples coming to the signal examples electrical signals in that electrical signals voltages and currents in a given circuits now acoustic signals this is this acoustic signals are mainly represented as an audio or speech signal so like audio signal is nothing but analog signal representation whereas a digital signal coming to the video signals here the video signals are mainly intensity variations in an image intensity variations in an image now biological signals means sequence of bases in gen and finally a noise signal nothing but it is a unwanted signal so it is the graphical representation of a signals hello students no need to write any anything on the screen now coming to measuring signals so by graphically represented the signal is simply like this it is the one of the analog signal this analog signal is having the x axis is a time period and y axis is a amplitude amplitude is nothing but an voltage 
so the time period is simply represented as small t so this is the representation of a period which is along with the x axis so we have to considering one complete cycle one complete cycle and the vertical representation of a signal is uh, amplitude nothing but a voltage okay definitions of a given signal now coming to the voltage the force which moves an electrical current against the resistance nothing but voltage whereas waveform the shape of the signal previous slide is a sine wave derived from its the amplitude and frequency over a fixed time the other waveform is a square wave so in the previous slide we have to observing a sinusoidal signal in that sinusoidal signal we have to measuring an amplitude and frequency parameters in a fixed time hello students no need to write in the in our screen please maintain discipline now coming to an amplitude the maximum value of a signal measured from its average state so amplitude is nothing but the voltage of the given signal and now frequency the frequency of the given signal which is mainly measures the total number of cycles the total number of cycles can be achieved we have to define the frequency which is produced in a seconds like hs relate this to the speed of a processor for example 1.4 gigahertz or 1.4 billion cycles per second this is the example of the given signal representation now coming to classification of signals so the major elements of the in a signals and systems we are mainly classifying different signals so those are like this first one is the continuous time and the discrete time signals second one is periodic and non periodic signals and uh, causal and non causal signals deterministic and random signals even and odd signals exponential and sinusoidal signals bounded and unbounded signals and finally energy and power signals so these are the different types of signals which can be used in signals and systems coming to continuous time and discrete time signals which is simply represented as ct and dt so here continuous time signals take a real or complex values of the function and independent where independent variables that ranges over the real numbers and are denoted as an x of t so here the continuous time signal is graphical representation is like this so the entire graphical representation of the given signal is mathematically represented as x of t x of t whereas the discrete time signals take on real or complex values as a function of an independent variables that ranges over the integers which are denoted as an x of n so here we are observing a discrete time signal a discrete time signal is mainly contains number of integers the number of integers are placed in x axis which is measured for small n here small n is a integer so where small n is equals to 1 2 3 4 and so on this is appeared at x axis on the given diagram whereas the y axis is represented as the given sequences of the signals which is having some magnitude that is 1 or 2 and so on so totally the total graphical representation of discrete time signal is mathematically represented as x of n x of n finally the continuous time and discrete time signals are mostly considered in signals and systems by simply conveying the information from one place to another place now periodic and non periodic signals so another name of the non periodic signal is an aperiodic signal so periodic signal is nothing but a periodic signal have the property that satisfies the given fun, um, 
the way if the given condition that is x of small t plus capital t is equals to x of t this is the condition for a periodic signal for all the values of t the smallest value of capital t that satisfies the definition is called the period this is the graphical representation of a periodic signal in that that uh, in that the time periods of the given signal is zero to capital t and capital t to small t so here we are observing the periodic signal and uh, this signal is completely appeared for the next instant of time the next instant of time so periodically this signal is appeared in nightwise so whereas the non periodic signal is a left side periodic signal <coughs> here periodic and non periodic signals a given x of t is a continuous time signal whereas x of t is a periodic if x of t is equals to x of t plus t not for any value of t and any integer n so by considering a simple example x of t is equals to a into cos omega t so it is the one of the mathematical representation of a sinusoidal signal in this signal capital a is the magnitude of the given signal this is the representation of sin function or cos function this is the angle of the given function with respect to time so x of t plus t not is the condition for a periodic signal condition for a periodic signal that equals to a into cos omega t plus t not here t where the t value is represented as t plus t not by substituting this value in this t that equals to a into cos omega t plus omega t not so we have to multiplying this term along with the omega value so that equals to a into cos omega t plus 2 pi so finally a cos omega t so this is the complete representation of a sinusoidal signal where t not capital t not is equals to 1 by f not 1 by f not where f not is the fundamental frequency of the given signal where omega is the 2 pi f not this is the angular frequency of the given signal so it is the one of the representation of a periodic signal and now for a non periodic signals we have to justifying this following condition x of t is not equals to x of t plus capital t not so this is the condition for non periodic signals so in the previous one x of t is equals to x of t plus t not that is the representation of a periodic signal in mathematical operation so we have to satisfying that condition so that the signals are periodic or aperiodic signals by simply justifying the following conditions are satisfied a non periodic signal is assumed to have a periodic signal capital t is equals to infinity so for example a non periodic signal is an exponential signal so this is the simple example of a non periodic signal simply considered as an exponential signal so coming to the important condition of a periodicity for a discrete time signals so the same condition is existed in discrete time signals which are in periodic if x of n is equals to x of small n plus capital n so this is the condition for discrete time signal periodic function so in the previous one we are considering a continuous time signal continuous time signal is mathematically represented as x of t okay here a discrete time signal is represented in x of small n so the condition of periodicity in a discrete time signal is x of n is equals to x of small n plus capital n so for satisfying the above condition the frequency of the discrete time signal should be ratio of two integers that is f not is equals to small k by capital n so it is the one more graphical representation of a continuous time periodic signal so this is the periodic signal whereas the non periodic signal is does not appearing like this so that that kind of signal is also called as an aperiodic signal or non periodic signal so by simply considering 
a complex exponential signal or a sinusoidal signals so periodic complex exponential signal is mainly considered as an x of t is equals to e power j omega not into t so this is the exponential complex exponential signal representation for a periodic signal with period the total complete period capital t then e power j omega not into t is equals to e power j omega not into t plus capital t this is the condition for this is the condition for x of t is equals to x of t plus capital t so here in this small t we are substituting this value or e power j omega not into t plus capital t that equals to we have to expand the above equation e power j omega not into t into e power j omega not into capital t okay so therefore e power j omega not into t is equals to 1 this is the condition for a periodic complex exponential signal therefore the total time period t not is equals to 2 pi by magnitude of omega not magnitude of omega not for a discrete time signal x of small n plus capital n that equals to x of n for all the values of n and nth value this is the integer value integer value here x of small n plus m into capital n that equals to x of n for m an an integer this is the small m it is an integer so the fundamental period of n not of an x of n is the smallest positive integer of capital n so this is the representation of a discrete time signal with different sequences the different sequences so that is 0 to n n to 2n 2n to 3n and so on whereas 0 to minus n minus n to minus 2n and minus 2n to minus 3n and so on so it is the representation of a discrete time signal now causal and non causal signals so a causal signal is mainly uh, considered by satisfying the following condition that is the signal is zero for t is less than 0 and an and a non causal signal is zero for t greater than 0 so these are the two condition when we are satisfying these conditions t is less than 0 therefore it is a causal signal whereas t is greater than 0 it is a non causal signal so we are appearing the following graphical representations of a causal and non causal signals are like this so a right and left sided signals which are graphically represented like this so a right sided signal is 0 for t is less than capital t and a left sided signal is 0 for t is greater than capital t where capital t can be positive or negative positive or negative here we are observing the left sided sequences the right sided sequence and as well as the left sided sequence along with respect to time t so this is the function of the time which will satisfying the conditions that is t is less than t and t is greater than capital t so here we are observing the following graphical representations of a causal and non causal signals now coming to deterministic and random signals so deterministic and random signals is nothing but it is a simple a single uh, it, it, it is a simple signal which is predictable with respect to time so there is no uncertainty with respect to its value and it any time okay so these signals can be expressed mathematically for example x of t is equals to sin 3t it is a deterministic signal it is a deterministic signal for mathematical representation of the given signal so it is the graphical view of a deterministic signal now random signal the random signal is mainly depending on it is a it is a one of the uncertainty of the given signal as compared to the previous one so these signals are random that is not predictable with respect to time so there is an uncertainty with respect to its the value of the any instant of time so these signals cannot be expressed mathematically these signals cannot be expressed mathematically because of the random signals are 
continuously operated along with along with the uh, for example by considering an audio signal the audio signal is having different amplitude levels will be appeared because of our voice signals are providing so many amplitude functions so our vocal lengths will be changed in different uh, particular lengths so because of the amplitude of the given signal because of the amplitude of the given signal can produces the random outputs are available here and finally the graphical representation of a given random signal is it is a one of the noise signal it is also called as a non deterministic signal non deterministic signal and now even and odd signals madam unda time undandi కొర్రీ సడుదాం ఇంకో ఫైవ్ మినిట్స్ తర్వాత ఓకే మేడం నా కమింగ్ టు ఈవెన్ అండ్ ఆర్ట్ సిగ్నల్స్ సో ద రిప్రజెంటేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఈవెన్ అండ్ ఆర్ట్ సిగ్నల్స్ ఆర్ మ్యాథమెటికల్లీ రిటర్న్ యాజ్ లైక్ దిస్ ద ఈవెన్ సిగ్నల్ ఈస్ మ్యాథమెటికల్లీ రిటర్న్ యాజ్ ఎక్సి ఆఫ్ టీ ఈస్ ఈక్వల్స్ టు ఎక్సి ఆఫ్ మైనస్ టీ ఇట్ ఈస్ ద కండిషన్ ఫర్ ఎన్ ఈవెన్ సిగ్నల్ వేర్ యాజ్ an odd signal is mathematically represented as x not of t is equals to minus x not of minus t minus x not of minus t so here we are observing the graphical representation of an even signal and odd signal so the condition for an even signal condition for an even signal is simply like this x of t and one more signal is x of minus t so here we are observing the magnitude of the given signal is 1 with respect to time the signal will be varied so the condition is satisfying xc of t xc of t is equals to xc of minus t here we are observing the the, the response of the even signal is appeared for both negative and positive sides along with respect to time so here the magnitude of the signal is half that is 1 by 2 so because of the magnitude of the signal is 1 both the sides are signals appeared therefore the magnitude of the signal is reduced to half whereas coming to the odd signal so by considering the two input signals x of t x of minus t in a given odd signal x not of t is equals to minus x not of minus t so here we are observing the signals are appeared the opposite signs of the given spectrum the opposite signs of the given response that is the magnitude of the signal is plus half the another portion of the signal is minus half so here we are observing the odd signal is completely opposite signs of the given representation so based on the graphical representation based on the mathematical expression we have to justify what is the even signal and what is the odd signal by simply satisfying the above conditions these are the x of t equals x of minus t and x not of t is equals to minus x not of minus t so this is the conditions for even and odd signals so one more graphical representation of even and odd signals in discrete time mode as well as the continuous time so x of t is equals to x of minus t this is for continuous time signals whereas in discrete time signal x of n is equals to x of minus n so this is for discrete time signal okay this is the condition for an even signal whereas the odd signal is minus x of t is equals to x of minus t this is for continuous time signal whereas in discrete time mode minus x of n is equals to x of minus n so students we have to uh, learn the following things what is the continuous time signal what is the discrete time signal so we have to justifying the continuous time signal is mathematically represented as x of t whereas the discrete time signal is represented as x of n so this is the simple difference what is the continuous time signal and what is the discrete time signal so we have to justifying these two things <clears throat> and it is coming to the exponential and sinusoidal signals so it is the graphical representation of an exponential signal 
so the mathematical expression of the exponential signal is x of t is equals to c into e power at c into e power at so where c is the complex exponential term where e power e power at where small a is the amplitude of the given signal so with respect to time t the signal will be varied so the signal will be exponentially varied with respect to t so these are the conditions a is greater than 0 and second condition is the a is less than 0 so whereas a is greater than 0 the signal is appeared the positive instance of time whereas a is less than 0 the signal is appeared in left side okay so the right side and left side portions of the signals by simply satisfying these two conditions and now bounded and unbounded signals so <clears throat> in a bounded signal every system is bounded but the meaningful signal is always bounded so bounded is nothing but uh, here we are considering one amplifier one amplifier or one system one system here we are applying one signal to the given system the system can process the input signal they have to providing the same amount of output is available okay there is no changes in the output so the output value is equals to the input value so therefore it is also called as a bounded signal whereas unbounded signal means we have to driven one sinusoidal signal is driven to the system the given system can process the input signal the output of the system can provide uh, a different signal is appeared and it does not matching the input signal the output of the signal does not matching the input of the signal so therefore it is the unbounded signal so it is the one of the important signal that is the bounded and unbounded signals coming to energy and power signals so the energy and power signals which are mainly considering one of the electrical signal so the electrical signal is nothing but one of the analog signal the analog signal is having the voltage function is v of t to be the voltage across a resistor r which producing a current i of t so therefore the instantaneous power p of t per ohm is defined as p of t is equals to v of t into i of t by r so what is the relation this is the total power of the given signal total power of the given signal so what is the relation how it is achieved by considering okay Today, the class is the introduction class is concluded. Introduction class is concluded. Hello, students. Hello, students. Anybody having any doubts regarding today's class? Hello. Can you post the your queries on chat box? Hello. All the students. Can you ask any questions on today's class? All of you able to understand our class? If you have any technical problems, so can you representing me regarding any technical problems? Hello. Okay. So all of you should learn the signals and systems subject. It is the one of the important important subject, especially electronics and communication engineering students. 
and as well as electrical and electronics engineering students so signals and systems are mainly used in real time applications like uh, aeronautical railway signaling controlling acoustic signaling so which are mainly used in medical applications like uh, biomedical signals okay so in that we are knowing about all these functions initially we have to knowing about the basic functions of the signals so after that we have to knowing about the mathematical representations of the all the signals how it is practically achieved by justifying the conditions and all the signals are operated in real time applications okay so all of you should learn our introduction class and next class we should continue to the remaining signals after that we have to explaining about the some part of the examples and systems functions okay so if you have to any doubts so please mentioning in your chat box and main thing is all the students can join only along with your pin numbers not only your names okay attendance is taken today onwards regularly attendance is mandatory for every class so all of you should maintain regular attendance okay this attendance is sending to the university from today onwards okay radhika madam time aipind okay thank you all of you the session is over मैं एंड मीटिंग पर आला